Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to talk about an open source WebSocket client which can be used connecting to WebSocket services. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use a web-based WebSocket which is openly available and show how we can use this client to connect to that WebSocket and receive messages. So the project URL for this WebSocket server is available here. And this is the .NET Core or .NET Standard version of the library. The documentation is available in the original library which was built in .NET 4. .star. So in terms of documentation, they have quite decent amount of documentation covered here. And this is how we should be using this library in terms of connecting to a WebSocket and getting message. So it's pretty standard. We create a WebSocket object passing the URL. And then on message, we attach an event, which is the callback will be received when server sends a message. And the connect is going to connect to the WebSocket server. Now optionally, if you want to send the message from client, you can use the send method available as a part of this object. Apart from that, there are a few other things we can play around. One of them is there's an option to figure out what kind of message data is coming. And based on that, we can do certain operation. For example, this is especially useful if the data is in binary and we need to find out a way to deserialize the data in certain format. And then there's a on error event which we can attach to capture any event. And then finally, there's an on close event which also we can capture. An on close event is usually useful for reconnecting back to the server at some reconnection logic. So I am using this socket bay, which is a publicly available website. We can use this for testing some demo application so we can connect to it and start sending message. And this is the URL. And that is what I'm going to use in my project. So here, what I have done, as you can see, I have first created an object of the WebSocket from that NuGet package. And it takes the URL, so I'm passing the URL. Optionally, you can also pass the protocol, which I'm not passing here. And I'm using using statement here so that after it gets out, it can be disposed. And then there is a property called log where we can set up the log level and on output of the log, we can do certain action. I'm doing some console.write. And this is the main method we'll be dealing with, which is on message on which we're going to get the sender as well as the event arg, message event arg. And the message event argument has a data property, which is a string which is what we are going to write in console. And this is the main property which we'll be using normally as well when programming. And then here on error, I'm just capturing this. And I am, and the E here is error event arc. So I can use E dot message or the exception itself to log in case of an error and this is going to keep the exception object itself and here on error all i'm doing is i'm printing out the exception and then delaying or slipping for thousand millisecond or one second and then trying to reconnect to the web circuit again and same thing i'm doing for the close on close i'm just logging out why it is closed the even dark here which is close event arc has code and reason. So we can log the code and the reason and reason usually tells exactly what happened. These are the two main properties that we have that we can play around with. 
and then here as i mentioned i'm just flipping for a second and then trying to reconnect and then on open is the method which is or is the event which will be called back when the websocket connection is open so here just printing out a message saying starting websocket connection started websocket connection and then what is the current ready state ready state is a state and if we see it is connecting open closing closed ideally if it is connected the status should be open pre-open it will be connecting and then closed and pre-closed is closing these are the four states that are available and then finally i'm doing websocket.connect and here the beginning i just created a manual reset event and here i'm doing a wait one so basically waiting until the reset event is done this is just so that the console can keep running so now what i can do is i can try running this application and once i run the application i should be seeing the connected message and the ready state should be open so here you can see it says started let me increase the font a little bit so you can see here started websocket client and then state is open this is i should have kept a uh, little bit of space between the two otherwise it's confusing so let's run again and here we can see started websocket client and the state is open now let's go to the socket bay and let's send here a message and you can say hello from socket server and now if we go here we can see here hello from websocket server and here if you see that this is nothing but the log that i added right because i said log everything log trace so it is logging everything here now if i go back to my log and instead of trace just put it as error then we are not going to see those logs anymore so it's connected let's go back here and let's send another message message let's send it and this time we just see another message so this is how we can utilize this open source NuGet package the reason i came across this package is usually if we are using signaler as our websocket server we can use signaler client very easily but i have found signaler client not working very well with some other websocket format and that is where i had to end up using this websocket shop so that is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel and if you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video